Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo from datingadviceguru.com with the podcast that's got the most for you in your relationship. At least I like to think so. That's why you keep coming back. That's why you keep tuning in, as they used to say on the old radio days. You keep coming back because you want to have the kind of relationship that makes you feel loved, that gives you what you need, because so few relationships these days do, don't they? I mean, it's kind of hard to find really fulfilling relationships. Our work relationships can suck, our friendships can suck, but one thing we expect, and that is that our love relationship does not suck. So today, we're going to talk about how to get out of a toxic relationship. Yes, those relationships that do suck. I'm going to give you four steps to get out. Now, in my previous article, I pointed out all the signs of a healthy relationship, the kind of relationship you do want as opposed to don't want. I also gave you some signals to look out for that you're in a bad romance. Well, in this article today, we're going to kind of take a look at the steps to escape a toxic relationship if you think you're in one. Now, you might argue that a toxic relationship is a bit more extreme than an unhealthy one, but the reality is that if you're not in a relationship that is positive and moving forward in healthy ways, well, you need to get out of it. You're just wasting your time, your energy, and your love, right? You don't want to waste love. Well, let's summarize the worst parts of a relationship, which these are the big signs that you're in a toxic relationship. Toxic relationship sign number one is criticism. When your partner or you is more into pointing out your flaws and what they see is bad about you, you know this isn't going to work out, don't you? Relationships don't just stop being critical without some serious work. So if it starts off on this this footing, it's not going to get very much better. Toxic relationship sign number two, contempt. When your partner or you is constantly triggered by the things you say or do, With an almost violent roll of the eyes, you've got a relationship that's going to need a serious amount of work to fix. This is actually one of the four horsemen of the relationship apocalypse, by the way. You may have heard that that term before. Some very serious signs of a relationship going downhill, and this is one of the big ones. Relationship sign number three, avoidance. If you or your partner start avoiding each other more than feeling compelled to be together, well, you're in a toxic relationship. Simply put, you've reached a place where you aren't even feeling attraction, which is a bad place. Really bad. Toxic relationship sign number four, the dark cloud. If you constantly have a cloud of negative energy in your relationship, if your goodwill is down to zero and you almost don't even care if your partner cheats, well, then you know that That sound in the distance there, that's the bell of doom for you. These are the major indicators of a toxic relationship, these four signs here. So how do you get out of this relationship before it really causes damage to you and your heart? Can you get out of a toxic relationship? That's even bigger question. Well, yes, you can. And all it requires is some focus on these four steps. Get out of a toxic relationship. Step number one, make the list. Something I see every day in my coaching and my therapeutic practice is that people have a kind of addiction to talking and thinking about their situation, but they will almost, they'll recoil in fear at the thought of listing the problems, writing them down on paper, uh, listing the evidence and listing the reasons for leaving a relationship. Sounds kind of crazy, but that's true. Now, I'm not sure if this is because we're all secretly ashamed of the situation we're in or that we know if we actually write it down on paper that it's going to become more real. After all, the evidence is going to be right there, right? Staring you in the face. And yes, you'll have to make some serious decisions about what you want to do. And yes, you'll have to make a serious decision about what you want to do about your situation. You see, one of the crazy things about people is that they often feel better about doing nothing. It seems easier to not make a decision to break up, right? But the truth is that if you choose not to decide, you've still made a choice. You're choosing to stay even if you're not willing to admit it. One of the best things you can do to get your life on track and get yourself out of a bad relationship is to have the guts to take inventory of your relationship. Get a piece of paper out and make a list of all the reasons you should leave the relationship. That's it. One of the simplest exercises ever. Now, you might wonder why I didn't say, and then make a list of the reasons you should stay in the relationship, right? Well, simply put, you probably already know that you need to go. If you're even considering this exercise, you're probably already there. That's the reason you're listening to me right now. So you don't need more confusing and conflicting data. 
You need to face the truth and see the evidence that we tend to ignore every day. Just trust yourself that you aren't feeling this way for no reason. Trust your intuition and your heart. Remember, when you keep things floating around in the swirling cloud of your thoughts and feelings, you'll be pushed around in your own head. That's right, your own emotions will push you around like a bully pushing around a kid after school. You'll never be able to get a firm grasp on what you know is true. Instead, every new mood will just serve to confuse you. On a good day, today he's nice, so I'll stay in the relationship. The next day, he's a total jerk, but I'm still happy from the previous day when he was nice, so I'll just ride that a little longer. The rest of the week, he's cold and distant, but I'll still keep hoping for another good day so I don't have to make the really hard decision. You see how we play these head games with ourselves? Be brave, put it down on paper. We'll come back to this in a minute and the importance of it. Okay, now the next step of getting out of this failed romance. Break out of a toxic relationship. Step number two, cut them off. It's time to do the dirty. That's right. You got to do what you probably tried to do in the past. You have to break it off with them. And honest, you can't do what you probably did before, which was to leave a little secret door for them to come back into the relationship again. Oh yeah, come on. I know you did it. We've all done that one, right? Let's be perfectly brutally honest. A lot of the times that people break up, they're just trying to create some tension in their relationship, right? You're trying to kick his ass into gear. You're trying to get him to do what he wasn't doing before. They secretly know they'll get back together with this person the second the chance comes up. But they go through the motions of ending it, hoping that, that this, but they go through the motions of ending it, hoping that this might teach their partner a lesson and finally get them in gear, right? Or at least inject some new passion when they give in to a booty call. I don't know, one of those two. If you're in a toxic relationship, you have to be more clear about making it a real ending. If you really want out of the relationship, then you have to cut off contact with them. This might mean blocking their phone number from calls or texts. This will make sure that you're not tempted. If you really want out, you have to stay away from places they go. If you go to places that they frequent or go to a lot, you're basically rolling the dice on running into them. And that's usually intentional. Yeah, I know you're doing that. Don't get sucked into this semi-stalker-like behavior. If you really want out of the relationship, then you have to keep walking. If you do encounter your ex, either in the halls at work or on the street or wherever, you keep walking. Yes, you can say hi, but you do not stop. Now, you probably know that your soon-to-be ex has a soft, alluring side that can charm his way back into your bed. Come on, that's how people get back together most of the time, right? Highly toxic people have this way of turning on their charm when they want something or someone. You have to be on guard for any chance or planned encounter that could put you back in contact with them. Remember, just because you miss the good times with your ex does not mean he's the one for you. Get yourself out of a toxic, toxic relationship. Step number three, remember your billing. Okay, it's time to get that pen and paper out again. Only now you're going to make a list of all the best stuff about you. Imagine you're writing up a relationship resume for the awesome, smart, funny guy that you're about to meet. What would you put on it? What would you put on that resume? What are your assets? What are your best qualities as a person? You have to know your own value. What is it you bring to a relationship? An easy way of completing this one is to think about what you'd say to a relative or a good friend that was trying to leave their partner. What would you say to them? And would it be any different if they were saying that back to you. Keep this list of your good traits around to review when you inevitably feel a little bit low and insecure. If you hit a low mood, you now have a way to climb out of that pit. And then you need to start reviewing that list that you created in step one, right? On a daily basis, you need to review that list of why you got out of it, all the reasons why it's a crappy relationship. You have to remind yourself regularly about why you don't want to be with him, okay? Your mind will play this trick on you where it stops remembering the bad stuff and only remembers the good times. It will be very tempting to go back into that relationship if you start forgetting the reasons why you left in the first place, okay? Even better is to have a vivid memory, a vivid single emotional memory of him that you can summon at will. 
Just remember a situation where he completely repulsed you with this jerky, toxic behavior, and then replay that memory over and over several times in your head. Make that your go-to memory of him, and I guarantee that falling back into the same old situation with him is going to seem a whole lot less attractive. All right, escape a toxic relationship. Step number four, have a lifeboat. At some point, you'll probably need to make, uh, you might need some help to make this transition out of your toxic relationship. You might need to call a friend or talk to a therapist or bend your mom's ear. Just recognize up front that this is okay. Sometimes you need a friend to help calm you and ground you. We all do from time to time. Think about it. There's no organization that helps people deal with broken relationships and breakups. Really? Yeah. I mean, think about that. There's, there's AA for alcoholics. There's all these organizations to help support people, but there's nobody that helps you deal with a shattered relationship. You're pretty much on your own, which is why many people often go right back into a toxic relationship because they don't have a supportive environment to hold them outside the relationship. Your supportive friends and family want to be there for you. They want to help. So call on them when you need them. Just don't overuse it, right? But there's another kind of help you can get that doesn't involve anyone else. Sometimes you just don't want to let other people in on your process of healing. And it can be a bit embarrassing to admit that you're stuck, right? So what can you avoid having to break your own privacy? Get a plan. You need a, ro a roadmap to navigate the tricky twists and turns of relationships. It's not as easy as it once was. You need to know what men want. You need to know how to keep him from pulling away. You need to know how to get a man committed to you. You need to know how to avoid toxic and unhealthy relationships. You need to know how to get a man to fall in love with you and much, much more. And I do have a roadmap for you. The advanced tips and advice that is going to, they're going to help you make your relationship succeed even in spite of your flaws and shortcomings. If you want to discover how to make your relationship foolproof so you never have to worry about another toxic or failed relationship, I want you to go watch this short video presentation. Go on over to find out the secret of the broccoli and the cookies. Go on over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash connection. That's datingadviceguru.com forward slash connection. It's a fantastic short video that will explain to you what it is men are looking for and how to get a real connection with a man. Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo from datingadviceguru.com. As always, I want you to live and love with passion. DatingAdviceGuru.com, the Dating Advice Guru podcast and YouTube content, and all content herein is copyright Morpheus Productions, LLC. Feel free to contact Carlos at www.DatingAdviceGuru.com on the forum or click the Ask Carlos link on the site. We welcome your comments and questions.